Don't touch my foot. Howdy. What is oh, hey guys. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just petting my dog over here. Luna says hi. She wanted she wanted to, to come and, and do the intro too. Luna, can you say hey guys? Can you do that? <laughs> hey guys. There you go. Alrighty. So we've got YouTube up here has been having quite a long conversation about stuff and things. Um, we've been talking about anthrax, so <laughs> and packaging rocks. So it's been great. All right, here we go. <laughs> You're unhelping. Alrighty. So Wednesday we started our lovely messenger bag, yes. which you didn't bring the pattern back for that, but oh, um, no. yep, yeah, that's fine. So we have our messenger like bag. This. Simple messenger bag. Is that what it's called? I think it's just called messenger just, bag. Just messenger bag. Just vertical. But Maybe. this will be messenger. No, just messenger bag. Right. It will be messenger bag 2.0. Yeah, it is a vertical style. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have the satchel that's like a horizontal style. Right. Alrighty, so we got to this phase of construction. Um, we got our gussets yep. assembled. Yes. And then stop Bam. it. And then we got the all the bag parts put together. <laughs> today um pocket on bag parts together we got our front pocket glued to our inner front pocket um and we will be putting on the cap yep we got the lid and, and you did make a fancy extra. i made it yeah i made a nice little handle uh this morning that will sew in with the lid and it'll be down here at the back so when you pick it up your bag won't open yep uh, and then Andy knocked out a really neat little strap for it. So we'll have a contrasting strap yes. situation. Holes all the way down so it is fully adjustable. Yeah, and it just looks cool. It, it I think it looks neat with the holes all the way. And all, yeah, stitched to the same color so it has some uh, cohesion. That's right. And so then, and we looked up since our website is back up and running fully today, we have all of our items, not just 59 items on the website, which is super exciting. Um, this is our $20 oil tan side. So if you look up like $20 side, you're going to get that oil tan listing. This is an item that you could possibly get in the oil tan $20. It says side, but it's like, a, it's a piece. There's a footage you know, block that we mm -hmm. allocate for the $20 side slash pieces. And they're a good size. Yeah. Uh, this one, this bag is, what, five large panels, two gussets, a handle. And you said you could get two of them out of it. You could probably get two of them yeah. two out of it, yeah. Yeah. So, in any case, that's where we're at, and we're going to take it from there. Yeah. So, first thing I'm going to do is glue up my handle to my uh, lid. There we go. There brain, it is. Brain decided to join the party. Uh, so this is just going to sew in right with the lid to keep things nice and clean. Uh, and if you would like to measure two inches down from that top edge, yep. make some marks. So you'll line the lid uh, two inches down from the top edge, which seems like a lot. Uh, seems very low. Don't tell me there's no sound. No, there's sound. Oh, it's just we don't have a vertical camera. Oh, good. I hate it when I have to start over again. That's a long way for me to yeah. not <laughs> notice the sound was... Not working. It's my PTSD coming out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you go uh, two inches down from the top edge there because that puts your lid seam below that back outer pocket and just again cleans that look up a little bit. That's right. So it looks like we're about a half inch, well, maybe a little less than a half inch from the top. Mm -hmm. And again, still use Noclim. I love this stuff. We did not change glues. Never will. And then the lid is tapered. So yes. it's tapered inside so that you don't have to worry about getting it in your outside seam. So I'm just going to draw. I'm not going to go all the way to the edge, but I did. Whoops. That's Whoops. a slippery. Table's moving. Yeah. Oh, just, oh. Oh, oh, the yeah. mat. How close am I? Um, you need to go a little bit farther that way. And if you push this I'll side in a little bit, a little there we go, perfect. Okay. And then I'll scoot this way. All right. There you go. This, yeah, last time I mentioned I forgot my fancy silver pen. This is my fancy silver pen. It was some scrap, various colors of veg that I just made a little holder for the, the pen. So why wouldn't you use the same leather for right the strap? Why do you want to do the contrasting one? Uh, one, I like a contrasting look. Uh, two, it is a stretchy upholstery leather. So it wouldn't make a very sturdy strap. Ruler? Hmm. Ruler? Ah, there you are. Thank you. So I'm just measuring out where I'm going to put my strap because I didn't think to do that in advance. Morning, Chance. Morning. I heard you earlier. Really oh, we're in the middle of it. Oh. Yeah, live yeah. video's going. Oh, sorry. The light wasn't on. Did you uh, bring 
So this is eight and a half, sorry, four. Quarter. It is fun to have a contrasting leather sometimes. And you can, I mean, you can mix it up if you do have, maybe you don't have enough of, you know, one of your pieces or you do want to do something different. So you could use this leather as your pocket, for example, your mm -hmm. gussets, and you could do a two-tone bag. So, <clears throat> or maybe this is a pretty long strap. What is this? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. I just so told this Andy is, this morning, I was like, hey, can you cut me a, can you make me a strap real quick? So this is a little over four feet. It looks like yeah. maybe it's four and a half feet. So depending on the piece of leather that you have, if you don't have a piece of leather that's long enough to get your full strap from, mm -hmm. then cut it out of a piece of leather that you do, and then yep. uh, make some accents. And that also helps if you've got bag leather you really like. <clears throat> um, making your strap an accent piece helps you from making sure every time you cut leather that you're, you know, saving the back. Yeah. And because I have a lot of sides that are missing about 60% of it and it's just the back is all that's left. <laughs> I'm so skittish about, you know, that's the wrong thing. not having straps. Thanks. Chevy, Chevy's been watching us and subscribing to us on Twitch for 20 months. Wow. wow. Yeah. Chevy, you're a true, you're a true believer in the Springfield leather. Springfield leather on Twitch. Specific. The twitching Springfield leather. <laughs> Twitchy Springfield leather. Uh, awesome. Let's see, how far in are we so that I know where to put my glue? Uh, it is eight and a half inches there, so I'll let you figure out. So from nine and, and a half, half, so. One inch, so I need a half inch on each side. Yep. Oh. So you can just go to your nine and your half inch. Perfect. Just later. Yeah, it's funny, the uh, original pattern for this the photo on the front of it shows the completed bag, but the lid is upside down on the finished photos. Sweet. The tapered end of the lid is the front. On the side. <laughs> Oopsies. Yeah, there's there's a couple little differences, but you know. Um, somebody said. did ask if they do if they buy the pattern off the website right now, will it be the updated version? No. There we go. No. Because we have we don't. I don't have the. That's true. I don't have it yet. All I have is the drawing of the updated version. I haven't done the instructions and such yet, because those have also changed. Um, here you go. That's ready. Oh, perfect. Thanks. Yep. No. Yeah, so it's not, not quite there yet, uh, but we're close. We're very close. But honestly, I mean, this is not anything that you couldn't do with a pattern as mm -hmm. it is. I think, I, like, yeah. The only thing I changed is I trimmed the bottom of the gusset a quarter inch shorter and rounded it with a two-inch radius. Okay. Everything else, ex well, I guess... And then you the, made the, the pieces wider. The pockets are a half-inch wider at the top. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it is the same pattern. So you could kind of take the one that we have, or if you already have one at home, mm -hmm. you could you could alter it to just those little yeah. specks. And, and just stagger your bottom layers instead of doing them all in one mm -hmm. row. Otherwise, the instructions are relatively the same. One thing that threw me off the first time I made one of these, back when Clayton was still here, is that uh, the small pockets go on the outside, and that still baffles me. It's, I mean, it makes sense when you see the bag done, but when you're assembling it, it just feels weird. Shoot, if you want to, make another small pocket, sew it on the inside. Yeah. You can have all the pockets you want. As many pockets you as you want. Go crazy. Right. Uh, and now we get to watch glue dry. It's not that stretchy. He says stretchy. It's, it's, really, yeah. it's, it's really not that, like, this is me pulling on it. It really does not have a lot of stretch. No. It just wasn't, it more, wasn't his ideal. More than I'd like for a strap. Just a little bit. But he did say, I, I, I feel like if you sewed this, you're probably going to get pretty close yeah. to what you've got there. Yeah. Um, so, but each of those pieces of, of that $20 side are going to be different. Yep. You know, it's a, it's a odd lot kind of mystery leather. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for something more in like the four to five range or something that's going to be good for a strap bag, you could put that spec and we will get as close as we can with the selection that we currently have. Oh, yeah. there's my shears. Oh, and you're going to step on them. I am just falling apart. It's okay. It's Friday. I'm all out of uh, cohesion. I explained it to uh, Alex in the shop the other day. He's like, how you doing, Ryan? I was like, I feel, I'm just frayed. He said, what are you afraid of? I said, no, not afraid, like frayed, like my knots have come undone. <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> okay, so this, that two inches down, puts the top of your bag right where that taper ends. Look at that. It's really sharp. It that, was meant to be. Yeah, that was from the original pattern. I didn't have to be clever enough to figure that out. 
Uh, if you wanted to, I think if I were to start over, I would sew the lid onto this panel before I put the rest of them together. Because then, when I'm putting these together, I still have to fight this whole length at one point in the process. But now I'm fighting this length and weight right. uh, to do it. Because leather is heavy, especially when you're messing with a sewing machine. Yeah, really, this, this part could be done at any time. Yeah. 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 Especially with a 26, you can do it when the bag's put together. Did you get Lana treated up? I did. She was not interested in she coming to say hi. Jumping. Unlike she was, like, ten minutes ago. She, yeah. So... Now that we want her to, she's like, no. <clears throat> she's like, mm -mm. I'm doing it on my own time. Right, so now I will sue. She's not her mother's daughter. Oh, that. Oh, my water bottle's right in front of it. I can tell that. Perfect. Hey. There it is. Gold. All right. Flip my foot up. A little extra thread. Yep, we're still doing like we were yesterday with the 138 top, 69 bottom. So that is usually how I sew. Really, it's up to you, whatever you want. Uh, if you're using this and you want it to look a little more rustic or western, go for some 207. I think it'd look really cool on this pattern. Okay, let me get all my parts out of the way of my roller guide. There we go. Like I said, this is manageable, but it is a bit of a task with all these parts. It's definitely manageable if you have a servo motor. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you want to get that back stitch good there. That is yes. an important back stitch. Yes, indeed. Lids might not be the most frequent failure point, but they are one of the most frustrating. And my handles, I'm going to go ahead and back stitch the length of my handle attachments because that is going to be actually supporting the weight of the bag and everything in it. So I get to play a twister here while I do that. I'm going to show Liz some completed projects that are on our Discord page. Nice. Think of Nick. That's a good looking sheet. That's a good looking and sheet. And that agate. Look at that welt. You couldn't hear it, but she had a audible sigh in my ear. It looks like shark on that one. What leather did you use, Nick, on your for your green? For a split second, I thought I can't hear him. <laughs> a little. Oh, he wanted you to look at his DM. Oh, he probably wants me to send him stuff. It's a good-looking knife by Texas Hicks. That handle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've just I've just discovered that my skiving abilities at home are not ideal. <laughs> so I need that that'll be my next set of tools to purchase. It's all blue, really, which is Italian veg from okay. uh, Rocky Butero, whatever it is. Let's see. I have a couple knives that I need to make sure you select. Ooh, I need some cabs for them. Yeah, I'll see what I can find, Nick. All right. We made it. Made it. Yeah, that was slow and steady because of all the... Up and downs. Yeah. That's what the sewing machine does. We got a lot of contours. So, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of little humps to jump over and a whole bag rolled up on the throat of the machine. But I backstitched, so there's three stitches over the width of my handle attachments because I do not want those coming undone and they are going to be under some pressure. Under pressure. Especially if they take this bag to Tucson. Be full of rocks. I did have, I have like a Oh, I forget the brand, but it's one of those, like, every, you see them all. They have the rope handle crossbody bags that uh, I, um, that's like my, you know, going on a more adventurous vacation. Like the Kavu kind of a bag. style. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. 
and uh, it did get quite heavy because I had like rolls of stickers in there because I needed to like I tried to label all of our merchandise because it gets really confusing because we pack it ourselves in like there's a UPS <laughs> freight place and we go every morning because uh, the rock shows don't open until 10 so our thing was you know like we get up we get downstairs by 7 30 to 8 o'clock in the morning we go to this place called Jerry Bob's for breakfast <laughs> and we have some delicious Mexican breakfast um yes with like the most adorable little like I, they're like a little hispanic family i don't know it looked like a family um it was wonderful i got like beans and tortillas mm. every day for breakfast mm. like covered in eggs and like this really delicious sauce i loved it it was I fantastic didn't eat breakfast this morning yes. sorry <laughs> I meaning my breakfast is still sitting on my desk why are you like this <laughs> <laughs> um and then we would go to the ups freight place because the back end of our ford expedition was completely packed with rocks to the ceiling and then we would have to go and unload and then so you, you unload all these boxes and a lot of these boxes look the same because you know you buy from like three or four Moroccan places and all of their stuff looks the same and then you know like all of your Chinese vendors they all have this orangey yellow tape mm -hmm. that's the tape that they have and they all use it so like all of your bead boxes or any Chinese vendors that you go to they have some really cool like Mongolia has the coolest fluorite Nice. It just oh, yeah, has cool. stuff you're showing mm -hmm. this morning. Yeah. So really there's this adorable purple. little Chinese lady that we buy some really nice specimens from Mongolia from. Nice. And um, we get most of our beads from a couple ladies that, you know, most of the beads in the world, I think, are made in China at this mm -hmm. point. Um, that's where they process the, the rocks and the beads. They're very good at it. Yep. And, uh... And so anyways, they all have this, like, orange tape. So if you don't label them before they go in the thing, then they get back here, and then suddenly you have no idea what you have until you open it, and then you have to figure it out, and it's anyways. So my goal this year was to label everything. And I think that I did a pretty stellar job the, at it. The unload has gone so much faster this it, year than yeah, last year. It's been it's been pretty smooth. And yours, I think you bought more this year, it seemed like. No, we tried no. to not to. Tried, tried not to? We tried to buy a little bit less because they, they were like, we can go to the show in Denver in the fall uh, and we can restock. Well, yes, Tony, did you have a thing? Nothing. Okay. Nothing. nothing for me. Okay. So now we're gluing... Yes, gluing the back, back. pocket. Um, and this is, yeah, those tapered pockets. So when you glue it up, remember you're going to have to convince it a little bit at the top end to go where you want it to. Which is why you have to wait for your glue to get tacky. Yes, because then once you stick it once, it's stuck. Like the front pocket has been handled and mangled and folded a lot since Wednesday, and it's still holding strong. Nice. Uh, yeah, Rainy has good stuff. He put some messages in and then he retracted them. Oh, did he? That's how I feel sometimes in my life. I was like, oh, I wish that wouldn't come out of my face hole, but here we are. What I need to do right now is ask for forgiveness. <laughs> Tony sometimes will just grab his salt shaker and just hold it. And I feel like at that point he's like, being like, nope, nope. Yep. Just let it go. They're like, you got a salt shaker in your pocket? Or, and I was like, as a matter of fact, it's not just a salt shaker, it's a whole bottle. It's a, it's a big one, too. It's not one of the baby ones, it's for the serious kitchen. For the very salty kitchen. Oh, uh, every time I go to Kimball's desk, she's not there. All right, are you guys good here on camera she's four busy. and one in the... I think... Yeah, we'll figure it out. We can make Justin... Do oh, Justin's gone Justin. too. Yeah, no, I think we're good. We're good. We're good. The gusset's up. We're, we're good. good. You're waiting for the glue to dry. If you need yep. to, you're going to hit camera three. Okay. And then I'll switch you to the sewing machine. Thanks, Tony. I'll be right back. Thanks, Michael, Jeff. he's going to go see if we can get an answer to your question. Right now. Hello, Josh. I'm going to invade your space, Liz, and give okay. you some wet glue so okay. I can put some glue on the gussets. Perfect. The nice thing with this Renia is, yeah, it just cleans up really, really easy. So my little cut mat, or if you get it on the grain side of a piece of leather, you can just rub yep. it off. And unlike some of the solvent-based glues, it's not going to take any of the finish with it. That is very nice. Because uh, you don't need a rubber eraser. The only thing I don't care for doing with the Renia is, like, full glue-ups. Um, I was working on one of those play mats this morning. I had to glue up some really thin oil tan to a uh, thick suede. Oh, mm hmm. And just gluing up a 
I don't know, almost as wide as this and about 14 inches tall. So that's a big glue up oh, for this the, glue. Yeah. It took a while to brush it out, especially on that suede because it just soaks it up so much. Yeah, I feel like the solvent base, you know, your barge or your masters, it, yeah. it sits on top and you can kind of like squeegee it all over the place. Yep. Yeah, this stuff really soaks into suede's, uh, but still does the same thing of when it's dry and you stick it, it's stuck. So I sewed around the edge and now I don't have to worry about the middle of it turning into a weird little pillowcase. <laughs> What was uh, the coolest thing you guys decided against buying in Tucson? We decided against buying? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure there was something that was like, oh, we might want this. Ugh. Well, we did get this really, we, we ended up getting it, but it took us a minute. There was this piece mm -hmm. of calcite with fluorite and like pyrite sprinkles. Nice. Um, nice. It was, it was just like, so it was, it yeah. was, it's a big rock. It was probably, I think it was the most expensive rock that we got. Unless Kevin bought some more expensive Vivianite, but I I don't think that he did. So it was this it was this it's this large chunk of calcite, like like the size of this cutting mat, like kind of this oh, whole wow. area right here, and just all of these spikes all over the place, and then so like just really white, not clear like quartz, but mm -hmm. but you know opaque, um, and just beautiful chunk of calcite. And then it had these gorgeous, like, green-blue fluorite bobbles just stuck in the calcite all over. And then it's just sprinkled with pyrite, like, all along the quartz and, like, where you get these little crevices, all this little pyrite has formed, and it just, like, glistens. It was a gorgeous rock. Anyways, it's from this adorable little Peruvian lady, and, um... She is across from one of the bead vendors where we buy beads from, and Kevin is not, he could really care less about the beads. Yep. Um, and so he gets really bored when we're buying beads. But it takes a few hours. You have to go through, it's, you know, buying beads is, is a, a bit of a lengthy process. So we probably, you know, buy beads from this gal named Christy for, I don't know, two to three hours. Two to three hours is where we're over there buying beads. And so Kevin will walk around and he finds rocks while we do that. And so he was with the Peruvian lady and, and he bought some other little specimens. She had some smaller specimens of the calcite that he bought. Mm -hmm. Um, and he asked her the price on it and he was like, mm, I can't do that. Yep. And then he would walk around for a little bit and he'd come back and, and, you know, back and forth for like three days when we were at this show. And, um, hi sweetie. And finally they, they land on a, a common figure that they can both handle. So we did, we did end up getting that, but that was probably the longest drawn out rock. Yeah. That, that's a pretty that intense. What didn't we get? Bargaining. We almost didn't get, so we got some really amazing uh, fossilized coral out of Tampa Bay. Nice. Um, this guy from Florida will code, this is the first time that we've seen him. He says he goes to the show every other year because it takes him that long to like process the stuff that he gets. Makes sense. But, um, so we, he was in the Kino in like that, and there's like this first tent that you kind of can walk into with the Kino at the back. And so we had an hour and a half one night, and we're like, okay, we're just going to pop by the Kino, maybe get this tent out of the way so that we don't have to look at it tomorrow, and then we can come back and we'll hit all of our Moroccan vendors because that's where most of them are. And um, and so we get in there, and we see this just, just amazing fossilized coral specimens, like just spectacular specimens. Yeah. And there, some of them are... Um, like black light fluorescent um and so we started walking around and they were a little expensive and we were talking to them and it was Pretty just really item. yeah it was just really fascinating and so we did end up we we spent our full hour and a half that the show was left open at that guy's booth <laughs> wow. and we we had i think we had um eight flats that we got but we just got them all put out last night on retail so if anybody is local you can come check it out sure. you want to oh perfect you're ready to go yes so i'm gonna um glue this up. Well, They're just really cool just, pieces. Just really cool pieces of coral um, that have like agate inside or druzy. They're really um, pretty. Yeah, and then when you hit some of the agate with the black light, it's it'll be like a brown color and then it turns like fluorescent green Fantastic. when you hit it. Oh, it's so cool. But anyways, that was probably the coolest thing. Chris and I got uh, two pieces for our house because we just Nerds. it was just cool. Yeah. And we're like, next time, it's like, when we go to Disney World next time, we're going to come see you, because he wasn't too far away from Disney World. Nice. So. Did you show me the pictures of ones you got for your house? Did I send those to you? I don't know if I took pictures of those, actually. Uh, I talked to the person in the department, Michael, and Barge has not responded back to us. <laughs> 
my uh, favorite thing I've seen on retail from the show is that giant amethyst with the um, selenite uh -huh. in the middle. Oh, it's ridiculous. Oh, no, no, that's a, that's a calcite. Uh, calcite, yeah, calcite. Yeah. No, yeah, that is really cool. Uh, it's uh, you know, one of our big amethyst like tabletop geodes with just a calcite pillar right through the middle of it that's like four inches across. It's a, it's it's a huge pillar. It's wild. So this is maybe the coolest rock that yeah. I saw that we did not buy, but it was rather expensive. So this is a... Oh, that's I mean, cool. that's the description, and it's a little bit hard to make out all the colors, but it was just a really, really cool specimen. I think he was like two grand. How big is that? Um... A little bigger than hand size. Yeah. It was, it was like this big, yeah. probably. Yeah, like it's gorgeous, chunk. though. It was cool. Yeah. The colors are way better on... Yeah, the colors uh, are way better in person. Um, we actually, so our newsletter this week will be about our Tucson trip, and we'll mm -hmm. have the albums that, that Kevin and I took available for you guys to check out so you can see all of the rocks that we saw. I mean, we didn't buy a lot of the ones that I took pictures of, but right. you can see a bunch of stuff that we saw. So check out that slideshow for the answer to my question, in addition to that rock. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, uh, this morning Brandon uh, gave us all his slideshow of Herman Oak because he was up there last week. So it was really cool. I, I had not seen a lot of their stuff. Um, you know, I have a general idea of how leather is made, uh, but I was also wrong about a lot of it. Uh, <laughs> so it was really cool to see it. Yeah. Uh, it was cool to see how wrong you were. Oh, yeah, it's always good. If you've never, I, I know, we, we need to start. We, a couple of years ago, we did pretty good one summer, and we took like four or five tours up there of yep. our, our staff here, um, and we need to do that again. But if you haven't been to the Herman Oak Tannery and you get a chance to go, I highly recommend taking a tour of the tannery just so you can understand. Like, it, it really opens your mind a lot to everything that goes into the process and how finicky it can be. And, the time. Um, and just the time that it takes to to do it. Yeah, the, the time and the labor and the skill is like, oh, that price checks out. Yeah, it is not a fast process. No, about month and a half. For Did a you quick buy one. any dino bones or opals? <gasps> oh no, we didn't. But that was actually maybe one of the cooler things that we saw that we didn't get because it was just a display. Um, so at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show, mm -hmm. like. It goes on for four days. It's at the convention center. It's like the high end where you can see like the Smithsonian will send um, exhibits down to the show. Like it's a really cool fan. So it's just like an exhibition, not yeah, a I mean, sale. You can buy stuff. No, there's there's uh, jewelry makers and you can buy little specimens. But you definitely there's also like really cool specimens that are just there. And they have a couple exhibits that, you know, aren't for sale. They're yeah. just there. And so there was this guy and he, um, it was agatized dinosaur bone and so he had a display so cool and i do have a couple pictures of it where these dinosaur bones that they found you know they they'll get in and you can tell the difference between just a bone and a bone that's got some agate in it because yeah. it's a lot heavier and uh really neat specimens with just some crazy agates that's cool. in the middle of dinosaur bones that was just really and the, the guy that owned the exhibit was like there and we got to talk right. to him for a little bit. I'll give this to you so. to glue up because okay. I do not have the surface to keep it off yeah. the cowhide. There you go, friend. Yeah. So, so. these uh, gussets do measure up to line up with the top. Uh, so the top here lines up with the top of your bag uh, pretty reliably. Um, I say pretty reliably because leather patterns are delightfully imprecise. Well, uh, you know, leather is stretchy. Yep, it's stretchy and three to four ounces. That is a, what, half millimeter range almost? Uh, or I guess 0.3, rather. Um, so it's a pretty big variance in your thickness when you're rounding corners and putting layers together. So what do you, do you suggest people start at the top, make sure the top lines up, and then make the bottom work? Yes. Yeah, because the bottom's going to be a bit of a fight anyway. Uh, like I said last time, you're going to have to hand sew it. Uh, so start at the top because that will be more visible than the bottom because that bottom, uh, the bottom of the gusset where it tucks in is pretty dang tucked in. So it's not, uh, not gonna be nearly as noticeable as if your top doesn't line up. So this is one of those times you want your glue to be nice and tacky, whatever glue you're using. Yep. You don't want it to, don't you want it, it to be ready because you want it to hold. Yep. Because this is going to be a bear to sew. 
And Renny is not going to overly dry out on you. I mean, if you leave it overnight, it probably will. Uh, so but if you leave gonna... it for like 15, 20 minutes, oh. it'll be fine. Yeah. So you're not going to um, pre-punch anything at the bottom here? Uh, no. So I have selected a chisel set that matches our stitch length. Perfect. Uh, the stitch length I sewed the rest of the bag at, this was not planned. This is just uh, dumb luck. Uh, happens to fit almost exactly with our 3.85 millimeter uh, French pricking iron set. Perfect. Uh, or stitching iron, rather, because they are for punching. Not I do feel like, at this point, if you want it, like, if you are hand sewing, you can go ahead and punch all of your holes this way, yep. and then punch them in your gusset, and you should be able to line up pretty mm -hmm. darn accurately. Um, you might have to maybe go through a hole or two twice, maybe, in this, yeah, but it, it, sh yeah, it should line up pretty well. So if you were doing that, I would... Well, you could glue it up and then punch all of your holes mm -hmm. here in your bag and then use your awl and you could go yeah. through the gusset one hole at a time if you wanted to or just punch you know down your gusset to where you feel like your holes aren't going to line up anymore at the bottom and then mm -hmm. do those one at a time through the gusset and into the bottom yeah. so and that would make everything a little bit easier if you're hand sewing yeah i would love to have the um we've got the lacing nippers that just punch a single lace hole. Yeah. I wish we had that for these. That would be amazing. Uh, yeah, these, I've, I've used them on here before. They're these fancy little guys. Uh, Quite nice. I love them. They're sturdy, and they will punch through a pretty significant amount of leather. I mean, I wouldn't go through, like, 10-ounce veg. But if I'm sewing up three or four layers of oil tan pretty thick, they'll right through. Well, especially since we don't have many layers here in our bottom, because we spread yeah. them out. Dry faster. That side's looking pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the trick with this is, yeah, you're going to be gluing up both sides at once. So, with a lot of bag designs, you can be like, okay, that side's looking good. Start to glue it, like, stick it together. But if you do that with this, your other side is going to touch somewhere and stick just enough to make the rest of the day much more frustrating. It's like some people are with their food. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. No food touching. Green for Sweden. Yeah, I'm a food mountain kind of guy. Just yeah. all of it goes in. One big bite. You know what? And that is looking good to me. These last little, like, kind of bluish spots, uh, they're barely wet. And those will be just fine. So, again, I'm starting at the top. Laying it over, <clears throat> getting the dog hair out of the glue. Tiny. Riveting to watch, I'm sure. And what I'm going to do is get that one stuck down good and then stick my other one on and kind of work both of these in tandem. I know we talked a little bit about it, but the change for this pattern is the gusset part, right? That's the major change. The pockets are also slightly different. They're one inch or a half inch wider at the top than they are at the bottom for your outer back and your outer front. Uh, the gussets are a quarter inch shorter and radius to two inches. Um, instead of a square bottom. Instead of a square, like, notched bottom. And your little contour part of your deal putting our rain tabs pointing away from them because that would be pointed towards the top what once it's all closed the parts you're hanging on to yes yeah the, oh. the gussets rain your your rain flaps point yeah because they go inside the bag they the top as you walk around and flail your bag it keeps things from falling out yeah that's my problem everyone flails right it's how you move around the I world flail. yeah same <laughs> Walking around with my arms just flat, flat, flailing around. On the flat, planet. flat. Oh my goodness, guys. We were on the flight. We were, it was, More had bathrooms? we just taken off? Hey, Urban. I had just got my beverage. I think it was a flight from Dallas to tu to Tucson. And we're sitting there. Chris and I are, are sitting next to each other. And, um, oh, the lady, so we had, ha we had gotten, you know, like, the drink that you get on the, mm -hmm. the flight. And I had just gotten Sprite, thank goodness. Like, it was just Sprite. And the lady walked by with her trash bag, and I went to put my trash in the bag, and I just, like, swiped my drink right into Chris's lap. Like, just oh right into his... And he just looks at me. I was like, uh -huh. Better Chris than her. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
sorry. And, the, and then, like, the stewardess, she was just like, oh, like, I could just see it. She was like, oh. it wasn't so bad. Like, it wasn't a yeah. lot. It was mostly ice. There was, like, some Sprite in there. But at least it wasn't, you know, like, she a dark really beverage. Beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> she was just, and so she went and got me some paper towels. And it was fine. But um, it was just, just, whoop. So I can't, I just, I got all the flails. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tend to, like, if I start to knock something over, I panic to catch it and make things so much worse. You know, like, <laughs> start to knock a water bottle over, and I'll go to catch it and accidentally just punch it across the room. And... Thanks for the follow there, Red Ann. Oh, Chevy redeemed all the sips. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> it's already set. Right? It's already, I missed, I missed what Tony came over here for a second ago. What are you, forced to drink coffee? Cheers, yeah. Poor thing. It's all right. <laughs> it's a Twitch channel point. Yeah. I don't know, me and me <laughs> will rarely gripe about being given coffee. I know. Oh, oh. okay, that's, that's, Sorry, that's fine. Just that's good. Fighting. We got the good old bottom finger fight happening. Yes. Is that what that is? So this one is lining up way differently than the last one I did. Um, Look at that. By about a quarter inch. Uh, which, again, it's leather stretches. Yeah. <laughs> and the last one was a much firmer leather. Uh, Dirty Zephyr's little story there. So, there we go. That sounds like something I would do. <laughs> Shaking my friend's grandma's hand <laughs> at Christmas and uh, ended up smashing my glass into the ground instead of putting it on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about your glass there. <laughs> oh, it's only a favorite family heirloom. Um, I had to stop buying wine glasses with stems. Because <laughs> uh, I just I just broke them constantly. Like, I just... And I'm not like a... I'm not like yeah. a fridge. It's like, it would be like a glass and a half of wine. Right. And like, so like it would be on like the TV tray and I'd get up from the couch and my hip would hit the TV tray and it would just fall over. Yeah. So now I'm only allowed to buy stemless wine glasses. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you only have stemless wine glasses at your house anyway. Yeah. After that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have uh, just an absurd number of silicone pint cups. Because like all breweries have them and I used to hang out a lot of breweries. So they're great little things to have. But also, I can't break them. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay, I think we're ready right, to sew. So we're ready to sew, and as you can see, this one lined up just awesome. I'm quite pleased with that. This one lined up fine. It's got a, bit, it's got a wee bit of a pucker, a but a I pucker. feel like what you might be able to do, mm -hmm. so if you line up the top, and then maybe you line up the bottom, and then you kind of squishes you yep. like your sides in, that'll kind of give you a little bit of room, but I mean... Yeah, a little pucker there. But that's uh, all right. We're hand-stitching that part. So you probably just hammer it out a little bit. while you're stitching. Yeah. This side, awesome, perfect, perfect. just like I drew it up. Yeah. Alrighty, uh, guys, we're right. gonna put this in the sewing machine. This part, uh, I will have some better measurements, uh, but right now it is until it becomes a hassle to sew for me is when I stop. Uh, so I will have measurements of you sew this far down the panel. Everything arranged here. Um, again, this is one you'll want to do out of a softer leather because you've got the whole bag put together now to get on the sewing machine. Unless you're hand sewing. Yeah, if you're hand sewing, Let's do something. Then do whatever. Yeah, follow your heart. It's a nice thing my hand sewing. You are less restricted yeah. except by time. Hey, Ralph. I do think... wine glasses. I know, that is... Well, okay, so when I go to my sister's, you know, I, I'll make a drink when I get over there, and I always use her coffee mugs, because number one, no stem. Number two, it has a handle. Yeah. So... Wine glasses are... <laughs> I just drink my rum and coke way. out of my coffee mug. And that, that also works good, too. Love I don't that. love the silicone because it's squishy. I don't know. I don't have it's any silicone cups. Yeah, yeah I, and I don't hate them. I just yeah. don't have any. Yeah, I've got a friend, whenever he comes over, he refuses to drink out of them. He's like, no, give me a glass. I need to have glasses. I don't want water that tastes like rubber. Mm, fair enough. <laughs> Can't argue with you. But I do, I do like my coffee bug. Sometimes I drink my wine out of a coffee bug. I just like the handle. And I love my coffee mugs, guys. And I have a million of them, and I like to use them. Yep. So I don't have, like, fancy wine glasses because I broke all of them, and I bought cheap, stimulus ones. That's a really... we got to get around this corner, guys, so hang tight. Yep. Oh, no, we don't. We stopped oh, before the corner. because we're going to hand sew it. Yep. 
So I left myself a good bit of room there. Uh, and then you just kind of <laughs> try to match it up on your other side. Oh no. I'll be in focus sewing mode. You all talk about whatever you like. Except bad things about me. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you may talk to her about Chevy guy, I just, I don't want to clean it up afterwards. I'm so on bars. <laughs> don't be, just own it. Just own that you're clumsy. I finally owned that I'm just kind of clumsy. Yep. Mm. I'm like, you know when there's like a puppy that doesn't realize how long its legs are and how big it's getting? That is how I am. <laughs> I just, my limbs are not connected to my brain very well. I like to say that I'm a walking head. <laughs> because like I just run into things too. Yep. I like, put my I, shoulders on stuff constantly. Yeah. I'm always running into walls or pillars or just, you know. You know, like, cats have their whiskers so they know how big they are so that they don't go into places. So like, I, I, sh I could use some of those. So I grew a beard. <laughs> 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 all right, so that is one... Uh, that's useless, never mind. Don't worry about it. We'll see it when we're all done. Got one side done. Now we're doing the other side. Yep. And this... Oh, Dolores says you're doing a good job. Thanks, Dolores. <laughs> Come save hi to us again anytime. Hi Ralph. Oh, that's a no fun no one. Chevy, I have to clean it up. Because I have I have O C D. Oh, so this was a fun conversation the other day. My husband and I realized it's not that he doesn't see when things are dirty. It's just they haven't gotten to the point where they need to be cleaned yet. I get that. <laughs> okay, and so for me, if there's any dirt, it needs to be cleaned. But for him, he can look at the counter and be like, well, there's not enough crumbs. Like, there are crumbs. I can see that there are crumbs, but it's not enough for me to feel like I need to clean it. Where my threshold is, any crumbs need to be cleaned. <laughs> yeah, I, I get the like. <laughs> We're heading towards a cleaning, but we're not there yet. Yeah, I don't understand that. That doesn't That's compute fair. in my head. Not enough crumbs for me to waste my time cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you watching that live, Chris? Where are you watching it? Where are you watching it? Here he is. Oh, people are telling me as I walk through the store. Chris, I'm with you. And Liz is just like, I'm just gonna knock the entire beverage on your lap. Ooh. Oh, that one. Oh, yeah. well, oh we just talked a little bit. Perfect timing. More <laughs> there. I yeah. talked about how we discovered our thresholds for what looks dirty. I was discussing that. Because he's just sewing. I'm with you. It's not dirty enough for me to waste my time cleaning it. Yeah. Forget <laughs> it. We're going to cook again in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the perils of working with your husband. Uh, that was good. It's good to know that all the stores pretty much watching us live as well. Yep. And why do we have so many viewers right now? You girls are so high maintenance. We're just, we're thorough and consistent. But see, Liz has a lower threshold for cleaning and also does the cleaning. Yeah, exactly. I do the cleaning. <laughs> I mean, Chris does clean the kitchen because we have an agreement. I get that. Uh, because otherwise, life doesn't work well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, I am now doing my... Chevy, I used to have a Dyson. I have a, um... Um, I have a Kirby vacuum cleaner. Just <laughs> picture the Kirby, <laughs> little pink guy. <laughs> Sucking everything up. They're really good. Yeah. Um... We have one I was... A boy. Yeah, no, it's uh, it'll suck the carpet right off the floor. Yeah. <laughs> but then I also like I have a, my Kirby is my heavy duty cleaning days, and then I have like my handheld, uh, cordless battery operated vacuum for like my daily needs because we have five dogs, guys. We have five yep. dogs and a cat, and it's a constant. I need a good it's, recommendation I vacuum for a cordless every one. night. It's the one that we have here. I okay. love it because I have carpeted stairs. Yep. And I'm not lugging my like. Yeah. Air-powered vacuum. 
to go, eh, yeah. and then next step. Yeah. Yeah, my vacuum's quite old. It's probably due to be retired. That was my vacuum sound. That's Hello, good. Cynthia. Welcome. She's even got cowgirl emotes. I love it. <laughs> is that a cowgirl? I'm sorry. It's so small, guys. See. What is that, Tilly? I don't know. Is that a... Oh, it's a fork with the half. Right? Is that a fork? It's a cow fork. That's awesome. I love it. I have followed. We, we'll call it a donkey fork. You call it what? A donkey fork? Is that what you said? Yeah, because she has donkeys. Yes, donkey she fork. Has. So this is my other struggle when a camera is running is getting my seam to pull through, or my stitch to pull through to the backside. But also nine times out of ten, I refuse to not do it. Revan, was he good at selling Kirby's? Was that a successful business venture? Did he sell them in Oklahoma? Because that's where we bought ours at. <laughs> I got mine just down the street here. There's a vacuum There's, store that yeah. I went to. I went to school with that boy's oh, did uh, you? son. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, look at I've you I've known him for a long time. <laughs> yeah, because he's old. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't say it this time. She wanted to, but she's already been in trouble twice <laughs> on the video. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, back home there's a uh, vacuum manufacturing place, uh, but all the you know I-44 signs are, look at the vacuum museum! And the constant joke is like, oh, I bet that sucks. Mm. <laughs> but also, yeah, I, you know, I never got super stoked to go see a vacuum museum. I I'm, sure it's, <laughs> I'm sure it's, I'm sure at this point now, yeah, I would definitely go. Uh, but high school Ryan was less interested in... <laughs> <laughs> That's why he was her first husband. <laughs> uh. Adult Ryan's like, hey, I got a busy, busy Saturday plan. Oh, yeah, what are you doing? I'm going to run by the Home Depot, then down by the Kirby store. <laughs> yep, you know it. <gasps> there is a mini figs and brick store opening yes. in Springfield. So it's not a Lego store. Like, it's not a Lego licensed store. Um, but it is the closest that we will have in Springfield, and the grand opening is this weekend. So if anybody's in the area and also loves Legos... And it's where? It's by the Battlefield Mall. Oh, here in town. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. pirated minifigs. So, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Not fake minifigs. Not off-brand Justin minifigs. <laughs> Real minifigs. Hey, the ones I showed you were fake. <laughs> you were. You were good. He was good. I'm such a Lego snob, it's terrible. <laughs> Chevy, that is quite the story. Would the vacuum museum be in St. James? You betcha. <laughs> Looks like Ernie Murphy uh, knows yep. what you're talking about. <laughs> There's, I mean, several giant billboards on 44. Yeah, I grew up in St. James. Moved down here for college in 2009, and just really dug Springfield. Stay Cause put. we're the same age. Yeah. There's also a really good restaurant in St. James. Is there? Right next to the winery. Um, Is it in with it? I don't know if it's still there. Well, yes. There's a brewery there as well. Yes. Yeah, public house. Yeah, public house. That's what I'm talking about. Gotcha. Do I never think of that as a restaurant? Because <laughs> it's a brewery. <laughs> they also serve food there, so... It yeah. must be delicious. It's good. Mother's is a great snack bar. They used to have this really good sherry beer. His favorite ride at Disneyland was going to the Lego store. Amen, sister. <laughs> Mine would be building the droids. Or brother, whatever you are, I don't know. <laughs> That's... That's, Flinderous. That's Jen. That's Jen. The bar. The bar. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes, ma'am. It is a. I went there like three times when we were at Disneyland. <laughs> the only reason I would want to go is to build a lightsaber because it looks like a really fun experience. It is a really fun experience. And build a droid. Or is that at Disney World? Which one is? They, they both have a Lego store. Yeah. yeah. All right. To hey. Where are we making, Ryan? That handle works out like uh, me and Liz. Oh, uh, it yeah. holds the bag without opening it. Yep. Uh, so I've got my eh, and so, sewn in. Yeah, I was going to say, we don't like put a clasp on this bag, but you can put a clasp if you would want to. Mm -hmm. So that's just a 
personal preference, but otherwise it's just a loose flap, which yeah. it's long enough that it stays. A, with a cut it and use like a bone. Oh yeah, a bone yeah. To yeah. Go through just it. a little toggle. Um, this would look cool with one of those lever lock clasps, but if you're using soft leather, they don't work. We found out uh, if you have a lever lock clasp on a soft bag and you set it down, it just pops open. It's like, oh, that was fun. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Job. So, so now, now we're going to show you guys how to do probably one of these corners. Yeah. Do you want to do it? Sure. There you go. There's Here's this. That. It's still a little sticky. This. Yep. I will lean it here. Let's start with the non poopy side. Here's this. Yeah. Do the easy side, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I will get you some thread. So with this, to keep it all cohesive, you can hand stitch with machine thread. It's not a great time, but it works just fine. And it makes everything look the yeah. same. Oh. What are you doing? Just cut off some thread. Yeah. We'll swap seats. Oh, I was going to, because the granite is here. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Ooh. I'll stand for a minute. Alrighty, well, I'm gonna punch from the inside because there's yeah. not a better way to do that. Uh, Taconi, that's sewn up in St. James. So I should be able to just go through the first hole where the sewing machine ended, so I'm just gonna kinda. Mm -hmm. So I should cut the thread. Yep, yeah, measure it out a little bit there. I'm gonna scooch it over. And then just make it through. Oh, I need a mallet. Oh, yeah, you sure do. You're not just going to push it through? Hmm. I'm not that strong. I believe in you, Liz. Thanks. There it is. Yep. Out the other side. Uh, these are, uh, they're pricking irons, so they're not punch, or they're not round or diamond shaped. They are slits. So you end up with holes that look like you used a uh, stitching awl. Uh, but it's, you know, 10 stitching awls going at once, so it saves a lot of time. It's my favorite way to get that nice slanted stitching, and it tends to look a lot like the uh, machine. Just if you're gonna take a favorite ride at Disneyland, what would you choose? At Disneyland? Yes. Um, I mean, probably the Star Wars ride, the new one, the, mm, whatever the new one is called. Um, but at Disney World, my favorite one, Luna. They call it Rise of the Resistance. Yeah, Rise of the, yeah. Because yeah. it's stinking interactive and just amazing. Hey, Luna, stop it. Um, so, uh, Karen, it's Renia 315, or Aqualum 315 is the glue. Uh, Michael Seeger, uh, to stop the thread from cutting the slit, uh, just don't pull super hard, because it is, yeah, significantly smaller than your wax tan sewing thread. So you just want to get your tension to where it's holding everything together, but not really cinching it down. Uh, and the biggest thing you need to keep an eye on if you're trying to sew with machine thread or hand sew with machine thread is it is not braided, it's twisted, mm -hmm. it's just twined. Uh, so it can unravel. Yes, so when you pierce your needle through to keep it together, it's gonna try and unravel on you. Uh, I have had decent perfect. luck with putting just like a little bit of tape or something. Oh, that's perfect. Um, the number of holes? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and it's almost like the exact spacing. It is, it's really it is the exact spacing. Oh, uh, so this is a 3.85 millimeter so pricking? largest size, yeah, pricking iron, or pricking. stitching iron. Stitching iron, okay. Because pricking irons are just for marking the holes. These are actually for punching So, them. and I got it all the way around. Get this out of your way, sir. So here we go. Uh, if you do get some of those irons, uh, one I will say I had done a lot of research trying to find some a while back. Uh, ours are really good quality and a lot cheaper than I was able to find anywhere else. Yeah. What do you have Just the scissors. Ah. Um, I've got snaps here, sorry. Okay. Um, use something like a really nice clean piece of poly is good, or if you get one of those little like tendon mats or something like that, uh, because those teeth are really fine. Uh, so they're they're not too hard to break or bend. So be aware of that. And that's just the nature of the tool. It's not like a quality thing. Um, they're not, I mean, 
most of these, depending on what you're going through, they're not maybe necessarily meant to go through the entire thickness of right. whatever you're sewing. Um, they are meant to prick on the top, unless you're doing something like this that's fairly thin, not super dense and rigid. Right. Because, yeah, these ones are... I'm going to probably need pliers to get through this first hole. Designed okay. as stitching irons rather than pricking. So they, they cut. They're very, very sharp. Uh, and you can sharpen them. Um, and I've definitely cut my fingers while like trying to hold them vertical and hit them and then catch a corner. <clears throat> uh, that is a tough thing to get used to with these is unlike the round punches or diamond chisels and stuff, uh, if you're tilted a little bit towards or away with your iron when you hit it, your holes will come out. I mean, if your leather that you're sewing through is like almost quarter inch thick like this, your holes might come out like a quarter inch offline, like off of uh, where your seam is supposed to be. Yeah. I mean, if anyone is familiar with these, we do not carry the uh, backside versions. Um, there's left-handed and right-handed chisels. Uh, we only carry the one direction, which is 99% of the time just fine. Man, having the three chats, that's a lot to... There's four. Oh, well. I don't, don't have the other one. I'm okay with that. Three is a lot. Who's the other one? Let's see. Yeah, TikTok. Oh, are we on TikTok right now? Oh. Yeah. How well, exciting. Hello, TikTok. Liz has been trying to sell me on TikTok. That's cute. We've had a total of 23 views, so it's working out real great. More than we had without doing it. Um, I disagree. <laughs> 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 Did you say a and while, I, like, it was pretty good a couple of weeks ago? The first time we did it. I feel like it's with Chris and countertops. What? <laughs> There's not enough going on there for me to worry about. Oh. Uh, well, that's lame. That's why. <laughs> Reels and stuff perform really well in there, but... Yeah. Yeah, I still am baffled by TikTok and... Well, guys, this is what you do. So you yeah, put your holes and you sew all the way around, and uh, you do that twice. Is there another one? This is difficult to see. Yeah, those oh, yeah, stitching irons don't leave a giant hole, uh, which leads to very clean-looking sewing, but, yeah, it's not uh, super easy to spot. But yeah, with, with this, I would... You know, if I make myself one of these bags, I'm more likely to hand sew the whole thing. Uh, yeah. Just because if I'm doing any, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound, go for it. Just do the whole thing. And then you don't have to stitch with machine thread. <laughs> uh, which in this, you don't have to stitch with machine thread anyway. I'm just, it's what we had on hand, and it's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I would probably. Because of that. With machine thread. Like, I mean, if that's what you've used to sew. Right. Keep it all looking the same. Uh, unless it might be cool to do, like, an accent color. Uh, you know, like, in a green bag like this, it'd be pretty neato to do, like, a red thread. Mm -hmm. uh, just a little couple inches right around the bottom. I think would look really sharp. This way. If you put the new skin on your fingers. Stuff for finger cuts. It's Why are something. We talking about one direction? Because we love a good boy band. Oh. Do we? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh. Alrighty, guys. Well, this is this is what you do. Um, it's super awesome. And yeah. and that's it. That's the whole messenger bag. Yeah, do we want to throw a strap on it and just yeah, show how that. it looks all put together? Or I guess we can do it on the other one while you're sewing that one. Or do you want to do that? No, we can do this one. I need a off because they're going to fall off anyways. Yeah. Like ours, we can see this with a strap and the nice. And I love you handle. could you could tuck this too yes. like if you didn't want it hanging back. Yeah, I thought about adding a second stitch line like above that seam just to hold it in a little bit just harder. to keep it yeah. less floppy. But I do like that it's a little floppy. The whole bag is. It's a floppy bag. Yep. I don't know if I centered those, but it's a bar. There it is. There it is. Nice little crossbody. Satchel oh, sort. I do like a handle. Yep. And then we've yeah. just tucked this in. I mean, 
kind of hangs out there. So you can make it a little bit longer or shorter, but it does come up nicely, so you have a nice handle here for you to get up close and personal. Yeah. Figure out what's going on in here. Or you've set your bag down, the shoulder strap hit the ground. It's easier to catch that handle. Yeah. Those are your little water flaps that just fold right in. Yep. Everything's good to go. Or this can just tuck Liz, right in there. Yes. Do you know what country of origin the sienna comes out of? Or where we get the sienna oil? I can't remember who that comes from. Do you... What's the first oh, yeah. numbers? Oh, yeah. Good question. Don't ask me. <laughs> I'm going to say Mexico is a pretty, like, oil, like, they make a lot of oil pans. That's mm -hmm. nice. That's a good link, too. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Cool bag. Good. Good size bag. Put yep. your iPad in there. Put a couple books in there for yep. those of you that still read physical books. And that back pocket is handy just to have the one or two yeah. things you want without having to open the bag for them. Yeah. Have a cell phone pocket in here if you want or on the outside. Yeah. Like, do your yep. thing. I actually wonder. Eight nine two. Oh. Eight nine two. Is that ring about? So, no, it doesn't. Yeah. Well, you can make. I think phones have gotten a little bit bigger since we yeah. first made this. So if you did want it to fit your cell phone, you can kind of customize the width there. Yeah. It just needs another like inch or so, and it would be fine for a cell phone. But there you go. That's the messenger bag for you. Uh, thank you, Dolores, for the compliments on the bag and the teamwork. Do you see that measure information? Yeah. The, uh, I'm the gonna, it's job. probably Mexico. Okay. Yeah. It's probably Mexico. Um, Sorry, Ryan. We do yeah, not buy that directly from the manufacturer, so I, I can't say for 100%, but it's probably Mexico. The, the teamwork on this bag extends beyond uh, me and Liz working on it. Uh, figuring out how to, how much to shorten and radius those gussets, that was Andy. Um, we have developed a very good system where one of us will be banging our head against a problem and just say, I'm going to give up. This is your problem now. <laughs> and we'll trade projects. Uh, so he, he figured that out. I like it. Gusset. It's way easier to work with than yeah. having all five layers coming together. Because, yeah, my once. first thing was, like, I'm laying these seams out differently. Yeah. And yeah. I just could not, for life of me, get my head around what needed to change with the gusset. So Andy knocked that out. There you go. And then yeah. you just hand sew the corners. So. Yeah. Alrighty, folks, I guess we'll do a little bit of a Twitch after party here because that's what we have to do. Michael, I agree. Maybe so. some cabs to show Chevy for his oh, knife handles. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Alrighty, uh, guys. Next week we'll be doing other things. I think we have a round table on Wednesday and... No, no, no. Is it the last of the month no. already? No? No. Nope. Nope. Hold on, let me pull up the calendar. <laughs> do I need, I need to... Get your stuff together. Do I need to revise another pattern before next week? Thanks, Karen. I appreciate it. Oh, no, it is. Jerry and everyone. Round table on Wednesday and trading cards on Friday. There we go. End of the month. That is our new monthly routine. So cool. come tune in on Wednesday for whatever we are discussing and then uh, Friday for trading cards. So yeah. have a wonderful weekend, everybody, and we'll see you later. See you, everybody. Looking, hold on. Oh. Ah. Dean says I'm looking for the leather you use in the travel bags. That changes. That's not the old English chestnut, is it? The upholstery. I don't know. Do we have kits? Travel bag kits? Mm -hmm. uh, we have finished bags as well. Dean, we'll shoot you a message. Yeah. We'll shoot you a message. I have to I look that up. I think we have a couple messages to shoot him. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Say bye again. Bye. Farewell.